Okay, so now is the time to install the in-floor heating. Make sure you don't remember it after you put the floor tile down. Now, my personal favorite company to use is called New Heat. They have an amazing in-floor heating cable. It's waterproof. It's, um, the warranty is just phenomenal. They, they will come out to your house if there's a problem. They will find the problem. They will have a guy pull up the tile, fix the problem, put it back down, grout it, and you'll never even know that there was any problem. So a lot of companies will just they'll say, oh yeah, we'll replace the cable for you, we'll, we'll fix the cable. Well, that doesn't help you if you have um, cable underneath tile. You need the whole thing done, and they do that. So I'm just, I'm blown away by their customer service as well. Like, you call, they call in, you have any questions, any problems, they're there to help you, and they always know what they're doing, which is a huge help, especially when it comes to something like this. Great company. So here they are. You can buy um, the cable version and you can get it custom, basically you can custom fit it to your floor. So this particular one is 12 square feet, one of the smaller ones, because we only need to do a very small footprint of actual heat. And then when you buy the cable, you also need to get the thermostat. So now they have actually gone to touch screen. Gorgeous. This is their this is their basic model. Just a really really nice nice system. And if you want to make your um, installation even easier, you can install a full cable mat. So what you do is you measure the size of the room, and you send them those measurements. You say the registers here and the toilets here, and they will make a mat that fits perfectly. So what you do is you roll the mat out, and you mortar it down. So my personal favorite is using the cable. Some people just love using the mats. Um, I like the cable because when I'm on site then I can figure out where I'm going with it and I can change it because a lot of the times the customer has maybe a different idea than what they had originally so it works well for me. So this one like I was saying is a 12 square feet so what I do then is I figure out how deep my cabinet is, my vanity is, which in this case is 19 inches so I want to keep it out a little bit further than that from the wall which so I went to 20 inches. So you need to stay 8 inches away from the toilet and 4 inches away from the heat registers. Now it'll tell you in the book of exactly how far but just make sure you read it through and it'll tell you everything you need to know. So we're going to start with the layout. So what I did was I measured out 20 inches from the wall and I came to here. So I'm going to start my cable right here. I'm going to run it down and I have to stay 8 inches away from the toilet flange and the reason for that is, you don't want to keep it so close it'll actually melt the wax ring. Not a good idea. So what I'll end up doing is I'll run the cable, I'll start it, I have, to, I have to start it back here because it's going to be in the wall. So I'll have the cable go up the wall, and then it'll start here, and then I'll work my way around. So I'm going to get it all out of the box, and then I'll show you what to do. Once the cable is out, you pulled it all out, First thing you want to do is test it. So get your tester out and you're testing for ohms. So depending on what your amps are is where, where you'll put it. So you set it, hook it up, hook it up to, you got black on black and then the red on the white. Make sure you read it and then write, write it down in the book it comes with. You need to do this. This is part of the um, guarantee that they'll be able to repair it if anything happens because they need to know that it was done properly. So you do it once right away, once when it's down and once when everything's finished. So make sure that that's done and done right. So once you got that, you're ready to install the cable. So what I've done is I put a bar through the box and they have it set up so the holes you just need to punch them out and then you bring the cable through this hole here. So you start The black part, all of this black here, is not live wire. It's, it is not heated wire. So you don't, put, you don't need to put that on the ground. This will go up the wall where the uh, electrical box will go. So you want to start where the heating cable is, where you want it to start heating. So in this case, I want it to start heating right about here. So when I drill for the wall and I'll fish the rest of this wire up, 
But for now, we're just worried about the cable. So the cable goes in, and I'm following my line here. Don't worry about it. Mud will stick it right down without any issues. So one of the reasons you do it this way, you put keep the spool in the box is if you try and pull it out and then do it it'll get all twisted and it is not fun to deal with twisted wire so you bring it down and one loop before especially the tub so you'll see that I have two caps distance here now what when I come back you'll see what I do differently and this you can do you could do two spaces between every one if you wanted to. But for the most part, this is what you'll end up doing. So now, you'll see that I went three spaces. And this gives a very consistent heat. Though it may seem odd, this is very... And the final product is a very, very consistent heat. And you'll see it does not take long to do this. So now we're back to two spaces. And again, read read the book to make sure you understand what spacing is about. If you're going on top of concrete, then you'll be using the plastic. Um, they're basically look like this, and you wrap you wrap them around, stick them in the floor, and you wrap the cable around there. And again, it tells you all about it in the book. Real simple to work with. When you do when you do this uh, this way. Unfortunately, this cord gets in the way, but what I like to do in the, um, most of the time is I like to drill and get the box all ready and set up. I wasn't able to get the electrician in yet, so um, the cable you kind of have to deal with by hanging it up, moving it over, that sort of thing, so depending on how you do the project. So I'm going to come back down this way, and I'm sure you saw how I did the angles here. That keeps all your spacing consistent. Now let's say you get to the end and you say, oh, I don't, I don't have enough or I have too much. Not a big deal either way. If you have not enough, you could always undo it and then have the spacing for three every one. Or if you have too much, same thing, you could undo it and have the spacing for every two. The other option is if you have too much, what you do then is you run it back underneath or beside the toilet, underneath the vanity, beside it, anywhere that it can, it can go because the cable you cannot cut. It has to be the right length and if you guess wrong then it's just kind of the way it is and that has happened so don't fret. There's always ways around it. So the halfway point is here and it shows right on the cable. Really nice, really handy to have. Because then you know if you're halfway in the room and you get to this point, things are going well, continue what you're doing. If you come across this halfway and you're way over at the beginning or way almost at the end, you know you have a problem and then you can fix it. So that's the reason why they use that halfway point. So it's always easier to pull out a bit of cable first and then work with it. If you're making a run longer than 10 feet, so a 10 foot straight run, make sure you do, I, I can't remember the name for it, but do something like that right there. So you'll see that it almost does like a bit of a kink here. And what that does, is it allows for expansion because this cable does expand and contract a little bit. And if you keep it straight the whole time, that for some reason there's too much tension on it. I don't know the exact reason, but I know that they recommend you do that. Something I want to make sure I mention is when you get your kit, take your thermostat out of the box. Inside the box is the sensor cable. Don't do what I've done before and forget about it. Because once this is all installed, without the sensor cable, it can't pick up and know how hot or cold it is so it can't run properly. So the sensor cable goes in between a set of wires. You try and bring it out closer to the middle of the room, give or take, and then you electrical tape it down in a few spots, and then once you mortar it down, it stays in there. Very important, don't forget about that step. 
So here we are, right at the end, and I would say that's almost perfect. Because again, it's very difficult to get the perfectly right amount of cable, but this is so close to the wall, nobody walks over here. It's a great spot to end, and we don't have too much, because I didn't really want too much in this particular job. And that's all there is to it then. You'll run the wire up the wall in between, you'll cut out and put an electrical out, or outlet box, and then you'll have an electrician come and install this beautiful thermostat. Right now it's covered in plastic. Um, just a beautiful unit, and when it's all said and done, it's, uh, it is a great, great system. So but I, I need to stress, use an elect electrician to hook this up. Once it's in then, retest it, and then when you tile, test it one more time.